Hey everyone, it's Kim Dao here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys 10 Japan travel hacks that will make your travel to Japan a lot easier. Just before I start the video, make sure you guys click the thumbs up button and then subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet for more Japan related videos. And also follow me on my social media to keep up to date with me and what's happening in my life in Japan. And let's start the video. Hack number one, Wi-Fi. These days, Wi-Fi is very important to everyone. Let's face it, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys cannot survive Wi-Fi. I'm one of those people too. And yes, I do know it is bad to be so dependent on internet, but it's just how it is these days. The first time I went to Japan about five years ago, I had this mindset that, oh, Japan is a land of technology, right? There must be free Wi-Fi everywhere. Wrong. Back then, there was no free Wi-Fi in Japan. It was so hard to contact people, navigate around the country. It was very difficult back in the day. Luckily, these days, there are places where you can get free Wi-Fi, but wouldn't it be more convenient to have Wi-Fi everywhere you go? That is why you should get your own Wi-Fi by getting a pocket Wi-Fi or a SIM card. I'm going to be talking about both of these so you guys can pick whichever one is more convenient for you. First off, I'm going to be talking about the pocket Wi-Fi. So the pocket Wi-Fi got really popular a couple of years ago. The second time I went to Japan, I rented out pocket Wi-Fi and it made my life so much easier. I was able to look at maps, I was able to search up places where I wanted to go when I wasn't at home. I was able to contact my friends. It was amazing. Now typically pocket Wi-Fi's you have to get them before you come to Japan so if you just google up pocket Wi-Fi Japan rental something like that there are many companies that will rent out a pocket Wi-Fi to you. Now keep in mind they aren't exactly cheap so if I can remember correctly for one month I would pay about maybe $100 for a pocket Wi-Fi device. Now the good thing about the pocket Wi-Fi device is that it is very fast internet. You can connect your phone, you can connect your laptop, and you can do your work. Inconvenient thing about this is that you have to charge it. So you have to carry around something extra in your bag, which is a bit annoying when you're traveling especially. And you also have to keep an eye out on the battery. So when your battery dies, you won't have Wi-Fi, you have to charge it, and these days your phone dies really quickly too, right? And also if you're traveling in a big group of people and everyone's connected to this Wi-Fi and you guys want to separate, who's gonna keep the Wi-Fi device? But if you're traveling by yourself and you use your computer a lot as well, then I definitely recommend you get the Wi-Fi device. Now there are SIM cards. SIM cards recently became super popular in Japan for tourists. You can buy them very easily when you come to Japan. So you can even get them at the airport, but I recommend you go to a big camera, a Yamada Denki, one of the big electronic shops. They would definitely have SIM cards there. Now these SIM cards, they don't come with phone numbers. You can't get a phone number in Japan unless if you live here. But these are data SIM cards, which is exactly what you need. Now these SIM cards aren't exactly cheap as well compared to, I guess, other countries. So you can get about, I think, five gigabytes for about $30. And it only lasts for a certain amount of time. It depends on how long you buy it for. You can buy it for one week, two weeks, or one month. These SIM cards, you just put them into your phone, then you have to do some setup. So you need some Wi-Fi to set it up. And voila, you've got internet. Now, SIM cards are more convenient if you don't use a laptop. You just have to put it in your phone and then you've got Wi-Fi everywhere you go. So you don't have to carry it around a pocket Wi-Fi device. There is a data limit though. So that's a downside. Whereas the pocket Wi-Fi, usually there's no limit. So you can use as much internet as you want. Number two, getting a JR pass. A lot of people ask me if they should get a JR pass or not when they travel to Japan. And I can't really answer that for you because that's something you should try and figure out yourself because I don't know where you you are going to travel to in Japan. But anyway, the JR Pass is a pass that only people on tourist visas are able to get. It isn't cheap, it's about $300 for one week, but that means you can ride as many JR trains as you want for the whole week, including bullet trains, except the fastest one, which is the Nozomi. You can use the JR Pass to travel to different cities in Japan. So for example, you can go from Tokyo to Osaka, down to Hiroshima, and it saves you a lot of money because a one-way ticket from Tokyo to Osaka is about $150. So if you think about it this way, if you're going from Tokyo to Osaka down to, I don't know, Hiroshima, you're traveling around that area, then you go back to Tokyo, that would be worth it because if you calculate it all, a JR pass is cheaper than paying for the ticket separately. It is a very good pass to have if you plan to travel all around Japan because it will save you a lot of money. Number three, speaking about all the travel stuff, I want to tell you guys a site called audigo.jp. Now you guys may have known audigo because I traveled with them last year, but recently they have revamped their whole website, so it's completely different now. So the website allows you to plan your trip to Japan and it makes your life so much easier. So for example, there are a lot of people that want to travel to Japan but don't know much about Japan. And that's fine because this website makes everything easier for you by giving you suggestions. So you just put in dates of when you plan to travel, 
where you plan to travel and it will tell you guys suggestions on where you can go in Japan and how to get around which makes your life so much easier. One huge change in Odigo which I really like is that you can book your whole entire trip using this website. You can now book your flights, your accommodation, rent a car, you can book activities, you can book tours, everything can be done on this one website. So as you can see the website has improved a lot. Now one thing about this website that's really new they are trying to make it more community based which means you guys can be a contributor to the website and then you can get paid for making articles about Japan. You can share your experiences in Japan, you can give tips on traveling, you can give tips on where to shop, what places you must do when you are in Japan, things you must eat in Japan etc. It is much more like a community now and I'm also going to be making a lot of blog posts about traveling to Japan so make sure you follow me on Odigo which I'll link that down below as well. And a great thing is is that if you make blog posts or if you contribute to the community you earn points which turns into money so you actually get paid for the stuff that you do. So if you're planning to travel to Japan, you don't know what to do and you are stuck on how to plan your trip, then definitely check out the Odigo website or if you have already been to Japan and want to help others out, then make sure you sign up and then try and make some blog posts just to help other people out. And number four, train apps you can use in Japan. So you guys probably know that trains are kind of crazy in Japan. There are so many different train lines and it is very confusing. Like, I mean, look at this. When I first came to Japan, boy, I was confused. I did not know what I was doing. Luckily now because of train apps they do make things a lot more easier. There are many apps in English that you can use if you just type in Japan travel or Japan trains. Just download one of those apps and then put where you want to go and where you're coming from and it'll just make things so much easier. It will tell you exactly what trains you have to take, what transfers you have to make. It is very confusing at the start but once you get used to it it's just a lot easier. A lot of you guys already probably know this but you can use Google Maps. And I find Google Maps is a lot easier if you're putting in landmarks. For example, I'm staying in an Airbnb in Asakusa Bashi right now and I want to go to the Asakusa Sky Tree. I can just type in Asakusa Sky Tree and it tells me I can walk for 39 minutes which is probably not what I want to do but it's only a 16 minute train ride. I just have to take one train, it tells me I have to walk to the train station, it takes 4 minutes, take the train, it's got four stops in between and then I have to go to Oshiage station and from there I walk. So you can just look at the map, it tells you exactly where you have to go, exactly where the train stations are. It's just very convenient, it's all in English, so it makes things a lot easier for you. Number five, get a train card. Now why should you get a train card? Getting a train card is a lot easier because you don't have to buy a ticket. Now in Japan, especially around Tokyo, the big cities, there are many different train companies. So there's a JR line, the Tokyo Metro, and there are also private lines. Now say for example you are traveling from Shinjuku station to Asakusa station, there is no direct train that takes you from Shinjuku to Asakusa. You need to make some transfers and the easiest way is to transfer from different company to different company. So for example, if you're on a JR line, you have to buy a JR ticket you want to transfer to Tokyo Metro, you have to exit the JR line, go to Tokyo Metro and then you have to buy another ticket and then you have to wait in line for the ticket, you have to find out how much it costs to buy that ticket, it does take up some time. But with a train card you just beep yourself out and then you beep yourself in again when you go to Tokyo Metro, it saves a lot of time. Now these cards you can get at the airport, you can also get them at almost every single train station. It costs 500 yen and you can also get a refund so when you leave Japan you can get your refund back for this card. If you want one of these cards, then go to one of the ticket machines and you can also press an English option. But I really recommend you get one because it just makes your life so much easier. You can use your phone app to see what transfers you have to make and then just beep yourself in and out. Also if you're too lazy to pay cash, you can go to convenience stores and pay using this card as well. Number six, withdrawing money. So Japan is still pretty much a cash society, but lots of places still don't accept credit cards or debit cards. So when you travel to Japan, I really recommend you carrying a bunch of cash with you. Usually what I do is that I try and bring cash from my own country, I convert a little bit and then I come here on my card and I use my card to withdraw cash. And this can be done very easily if you go to a convenience store like 7-Eleven, Family Mart or Lawson. Now I know that ATMs in 7-Eleven work the best for a lot of people and Family Mart is also really good as well. It's also very foreigner friendly because they've got English, Chinese and Korean most of the time on these machines and besides convenience stores you can go to a post office to also withdraw money. Usually there is a fee when you use a foreign ATM it's about maybe 100 to 300 yen, depends on the ATM. And also you may be charged fees depending on the bank you are with. But withdrawing money in Japan has become very easy and you shouldn't really have any problems finding a convenience store that has an ATM in it. Number seven, bring a power board. Now this is especially useful for those who live in different countries and you guys 
don't use the same outlet as Japan. So almost all my electronics are Australian and they have the Australian plug which is different to Japan. And unfortunately I forgot to bring in my power board to this Airbnb and I'm having a hard time charging all my electronics so Kim you probably should take your own advice. But anyway this Airbnb did come with a Japanese power board and honestly guys if you are traveling with a lot of stuff to charge you should bring your own power board because you don't have to buy multiple adapters. I only have one Australia to Japan adapter which I use. I have a power board which is all the Australian plugs and I charge all my electronics on there usually. It just honestly makes your life easier and especially if you've got everything in one place, you don't forget charges if you leave them in the bathroom or in the kitchen or you know in other rooms. Even if your country uses the same plugs as Japan, it's probably still recommended to bring a power board just so you can charge everything in one area. Number eight, get a car and travel to other places in Japan. Now, if you want to travel to the countryside in Japan or to places where not many people go to, I highly recommend you get a car. Now, you can get a car pretty easily in Japan if you have an international license. I never really thought about driving around in Japan myself. And to be honest, okay, I'm not the greatest driver out there. And the thought about driving in Japan freaked me out because it's a different country and they have different rules. So yes, it was really scary. But after when I was going on all these trips around the countryside in Japan, I realized that having a car makes things so much easier because imagine this, you're in the countryside, there are not that many trains, there are not that many buses, you have to take the taxis everywhere which is expensive, you've got your luggage with you, you're lugging your luggage around in train stations up and down stairs and it's just... Sounds like a nightmare, right? Hiring a car is cheap and easy, especially if you're with a bunch of people, everyone just puts their money in, and it makes your life so much easier because you can put your luggage in there, you can go anywhere you want. Driving around Japan for me, it was very easy just because in Japan they drive on the same side of the road as in Australia but I know many people in the US who have an international license and still drove around Japan so if you want to go to places where not many people go to or if you want to go up mountains or if you want to explore then definitely getting a car and going on a road trip would be a lot of fun Number 9, Heat Packs I've talked about these in so many videos and I just have to keep telling you guys because I think they are amazing. Now these heat packs are something that you only use during winter. So you stick them on your clothes and they warm up and keep you warm throughout the day. I don't know why other countries don't really use these but I feel that they should because they're amazing. You just stick a few on your body especially if you want to wear cute clothes and it just keeps your whole body warm. But definitely if you're someone that can't really deal with cold very well then I think that you should try out this. Because even though it's not as cold in Tokyo for example, it still sucks when you are feeling cold and you just aren't really in the mood to walk around when it's that freezing. And number 10, the last hack is take a photo of the landmark you are going to or where you are going to. Now this hack is probably better back in the day. This is what I used to do myself. Back in a day where there was no Wi-Fi and smartphones weren't a thing as well. When I was traveling every day, I would have a plan on where to go. I would take a photo on my camera or maybe on my flip phone or something like that and then if I get lost I would show the picture to a random Japanese person to ask them to help me it was just a lot easier than trying to explain to them even though now we've got the internet we've got Wi-Fi which makes things a lot more easier to do ourselves sometimes you just get so lost that you just don't know where you are and it's just a lot easier to ask someone to help you if you show them a picture of the landmark and where you want to go if you're close by People will be able to help you out a lot easier that way. That is it for this video. Hope you guys found it helpful and hopefully you have a great trip to Japan if you are planning to go so. Make sure you thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and if you found it helpful. Also let me know down below what other tips you have on traveling to Japan because I'm sure you'll be able to help out a lot of other people as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and follow me on my social media. Also follow me on my vlog channel to see what I get up to in my everyday life. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!